Okay, this is September 14th, 2019, Upward Journey. Anybody have a, something they want to share with the group before we get started here? Any recent victories you want to share? Any recent revelation? I do. I do. <laughs> it happened at like 2.30 this morning, my time. Um, um, there's been a severe attack against my finances mm. and everything that I've been decreeing and declaring in the natural, the opposite has been um, happening where I'm basically down to zero. And I was like, Lord, what is going on? This is not right. This is not right. And so I couldn't sleep. No, sorry. I went to sleep last night and I woke up at 2.30 this morning and I said, I'm going to do an ascension. As soon as I began the um, ascension, I went straight into the um, Galactic Council wow. and a court case was presented. Um, Moses was there with me. Lord, Mel Lord Melchizedek was there with me. And I presented my case or it was done in um, it was like a tag team um, court case and the verdict was in my favor. And then um, I could hear people cheering, like they were clapping and cheering. And then I heard that there were, um, there were the galactic enforcers. And then I saw flashes of lightning and light bulb and um, um, bolts of light just being flashed and thrown to the ground. Well, well just being, um, I think, released from um, heaven. And I was like, okay. And so then that went on uh, for a while. I then put my hand out and I tasted honey. It was like a honeycomb. And as I took a piece of it and put it in my mouth, I heard taste and see that the Lord is good. So then um, I went back to sleep and then when I was writing it in my journal this morning, I got the revelation that those um, light bulb flashings, um, the bolts of lightning, they're new weapons that I have to use as well. Wonderful. So... Uh, I made not, uh, let's make how I want to summarize this uh, night and day. <laughs> Complete turnaround. Yep. Yep. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Oh, and then I heard judgment, judgment, like judge, judge, judge. And I'm like, okay. So I sat on the throne of judgment and then I heard judge to life, judge to life. So every area that has been under attack that is in the opposite of what I've been believing for, what has been prophesied to me, I judged it back to life. Awesome. Mm -hmm. With the Galactic Council involved, it seems to me this, this isn't just an individual yeah. uh, thing that's going on here. This, this has got to do with overall... Um, restoration of creation kind of things um in other words in other words the victories you're winning are not just for you exactly yeah. exactly i i discerned as well that it was for the ecclesia yeah yeah and as i'm talking i'm going to put the word forerunning on what you were doing mm. 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 so everything that you were doing uh was forerunning on for the benefit of the ecclesia and not just for yourself. Yes, yes. And this, this actually, this, this is perfect uh, for what I wanted to talk about today. Um, one of several things I wanted to talk about. Uh, forerunners, the word forerunners only used once in scripture with reference to great Jesus as the high priest that has forerun before, gone before us. A forerunner enters into something before others enter into it and enters into it on their behalf. So um, Jesus, as great high priest, went behind the veil with his lifeblood as the sacrifice to present. And he did that as the first one to function as high priest. 
as the first one to enter behind the veil, forerunning and fathering are connected in this way. We, we forerun into truth, into revelation. We see, receive, and enter into uh, mysteries that have been revealed. Scripture says that when Abraham ties to Melchizedek, that Melchizedek, I'm sorry, that Levi was in his loins, Levi being his grandson, and that Levi also tied to Melchizedek when Abraham tied to Melchizedek. So what I'm saying to you, Lorna, that as forerunner, everything you just did, you did on behalf of all who are your sons, your grandsons, your great-grandsons, who are within you and enter in with you at the same time that you enter in. Amen. Okay, so the forerunning comes first, and then the fathering of others into what we forerun comes next. So the fathering is when we uh, transfer what we have forerun into um, others can then see, receive, and enter into it also. So mm. forerunning comes first, and then comes fathering. I'm sorry, the Holy Spirit just reminded me of um, something, because there was so much like going on all at the same time. Um, the other thing that I heard was that the stars are celebrating you. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. We rejoice with you, and we have yet to see fully uh, the benefits that have already been uh, entered into by you on our behalf. Yeah. This is the other thing that I've seen is that you as a father, I mean, I, re I as a father receive from you as a father. We all receive from one another as um, fathers receiving from fathers because each one of us has specific areas of revelation that we are meant to forerun into, and then we are meant to uh, spread that out to the entire ecclesia as fathers. And each of you here has begun forerunning to some extent you are seeing revelation. You're, you're receiving the mystery of, revel of the revelation of mysteries. Uh, you've been doing this whole process of seeing, receiving, and entering into on behalf of others. So you have just begun something, and uh, your fathering <laughs> has just begun. Actually, you began your fathering with your testimony today. Wow. <laughs> Fathering us into the revelation of what you had forerun. Wow. Um, and as I said, I, I keep a journal and back on the 28th of July, one of the things I heard was that there is um, a galactic alignment in my life. Uh. So I think today was the manifestation of that, maybe? Yeah, yeah it's going to be like uh, before and after. <laughs> <laughs> Lorna's life before, before this and Lorna's life after this. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> I, was, I, I was like, this is not right. This is not right. Everything, you know, that we've been doing on OUB, everything I've been hearing in the spirit that I've been doing, you know, in my own time and what is in the natural is just not adding up. And I'm like, what is going on? And so that's where I was taken this morning. Yeah, you got some of the revelation of the behind the scenes that things have been going on. My sense is it's like turning the, uh, uh, like a, uh, uh, a safe with a big one with, with those tumblers that when you turn the turn the uh, combination dial the tumblers start turning you've been turning tumblers for a long period of time and you didn't know what all was going on but you just heard the rumbling <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and but they all clicked into place and the thing opened up today 
uh, and now you're going to be able to look and see, oh, this is what this going, oh, that's what that was. And the behind the scenes, uh, in, other words, in other words, the mysteries are being revealed now that you've been functioning in, in uh, doing the work, the prep work needed to get ready for this moment today. Wow. And then, then the revelation is going to come, I mean, it started to come, and then you father others into it. And this whole process is something that each of you here has been going through. I mean, your whole life has been preparation of, uh, for this time. Uh, and then it's been this process of becoming a forerunner. And then you cross over the threshold into the process of fathering others into what you have forerun on their behalf. Mm. Um, what I'm sensing is to release these lightning bolts, um, these lightning bolts and flashes of lightning to the Ecclesia as their weapons as well. Um, go ahead. Flow with it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so, Father, I thank you. I thank the Godhead. Oh, Jesus, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you. Ooh, I thank you for this morning. I thank you that you are faithful. And I thank you that what you reveal to me, what you have entrusted to me, huh, weapons of mass destruction. Oh, hallelujah, Father. Ah, Jesus, yes. Oh, in the authority and the capacity that you have given me, I now release them to the Ecclesia. And, uh, and also wisdom, 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 when to use them and how to use them. They are now released, the lightning bolts and the flashing lightning, flashing the bolts are now released in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Yeah. On our end, we're doing receiving here, receiving from you as a father. I'm just hearing wisdom. Just be, just be very careful and mm -hmm. wisdom, in because they were act, like they were so powerful um, and warp speed, so to speak. Mm -hmm. but, just powerful and bright, and they were being th they they were being hurled hurled from heaven mm. down onto earth or to wherever they needed to go. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Did anybody uh, see or sense something as Lauren was doing that that you sensed the need to share, the mandate to share it? Yeah. Um, I saw. I just saw while she was releasing that I saw a seat just above the earth and as she released it I could see everything flowing like liquid silver around the earth and then the earth started to flip at some point um, it was just flipping round and round and then at the point she mentioned the word stars I could see um, um, like um, those fireworks when they are released at night and I even heard the sound I could see all the shimmers you know, of all those flashes going all around the earth. So that's what I saw when she released that. I just keep hearing we have to be so careful when we use these. Oh, oh. wow. I need wisdom. I was just holding out my hands to receive and I felt in both hands, but particularly in my left hand, a sensation of pulsations and, and pressure. And it's, it's still there. We all have some discovery yet to do with reference to, to this. And we take note of the caution to, to use wisdom. Okay, 
Thank you so much for sharing that, Lorna. We overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. Yes, you're welcome. And uh, fathering is giving away what's been given to you. Um, you use your wisdom, and there may be timing involved. And if you notice, the Lord has not at this point revealed all the details. Um, and that may be part of the wisdom part that we'll get that when we're, uh, when the right time is there. But uh, forerunning is followed by fathering. The other thing that I'm absolutely convinced of is that we are meant to function on benches of 12. Why 12? Because New Jerusalem has 12 foundations. And uh, so forerunner, we become a forerunner, we become a father. At some point, I believe each one of us is meant to be built into a foundation and laid as a foundation, which means being placed on a bench of 12 as one of the 12. So that's something else to look forward to. I also see that at the top of New Jerusalem, functionally, I see New Jerusalem as a, as a uh, pyramid. So you've got foundation stones at the bottom. There's stones being built on the foundation. At the very top, there's a capstone, which is a uh, fully formed pyramid that's smaller than the large overall pyramid. And the capstone is, is Jesus in his fullness. After becoming a foundation, I believe we become a capstone, fully formed as kings and as sons of God. I want to go back to father, fathering for a moment, though. There's a one of the five names given to us as sons of God, those five names in order from the bottom up, are Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Wonderful, Counselor, like Paraclete, another Counselor, Holy Spirit, Jesus, Mighty God, Mighty God is functioning in the government of God. It's overcoming as an overcoming king. Overcoming all enemies. Then everlasting father. Then prince of peace. As everlasting fathers, when we enter into everlasting father, we are receiving from everlasting. I picture us like lying on our back and all the uh, many attributes of everlasting are just flowing down to us and we're receiving them. So everlasting life, everlasting peace, everlasting joy, all the long list of everything is just flowing like rain down to us below. That's an entering into everlasting. That's a, that's a crowning in everlasting uh, and as everlasting fathers. Uh, once we've come to a place of being coronated as an everlasting father. Now we're above, facing down, and all those attributes of everlasting are flowing out of us to our sons below. So crowning as an everlasting is, sitting, is lying on your back, receiving from above and entering into and so on. But coronation as everlasting father is above facing down and all that is now within you as a permanent possession it's part of who you are you entered into it and fully became it and now it's all flowing out of you into others so as a father you are imparting to others and as a father your mere presence others can draw on you on that which is within you and receive from you uh, Jesus is the everlasting Father, so we are simply becoming one with him is what's going on. 
that's everlasting father. So fa fathering in its highest form is everlasting father. Does that resonate with you? Yeah, that, um, well, that more reminds me of the tent of David. And, Frequencies, um, yeah. Yeah, bringing it down to the earth. Oh no, but before that, uh, well, it's a city anyway, the city of pure gold glass. And I see all the frequency coming down upon us like rain. Um, so, and now that we're, because, we, yeah, well, we've done a lot of forerunning with Titch in New Jerusalem. And, um, yeah, that's been very rewarding. Um, but, yeah, what you said, that mm -hmm. reminds me of everlasting, going into everlasting, but also reminds me of David's tent as well. Uh, honoring you publicly here, ma'am, I've, I've seen you uh, move from uh, massively into forerunning. I mean, you're, you are accelerating your forerunning now, and I am receiving from you, uh, you as a father. I'm receiving from you as a father now, and uh, I see you forerunning, but I also see you fathering. You've stepped over that threshold into fathering, from forerunning to fathering. Um, in a big way. <laughs> uh, I also felt last night that because um, now that I'm operating in the new earth, um, that I had to um, re release the new day. Like in the beginning, God made the day and the night, separated the day and the night or something like that. But I just felt I had to do um, the day. I had to. I had to make a new, just create a new day, mm -hmm. which is, which is both day and night, and night is night and day, but the same. So it's all one. And Oh, it's just hard to explain, but that's what I felt I had to do. Okay. Um, Last there, night, every one, one day. But there's no night. There's no day. It's just the same. Okay. Let me just uh, briefly say this. Uh, there's a series of, um, if, you, if you look in Genesis, Genesis in the beginning, there's a series of separations happening. This is separated mm. from that, and this is separated from that. Um, I, I, my sense is that uh, it's almost like we work backwards into complete oneness. Um, mm. If that makes any sense. Uh, each one of those separations is almost, in a certain sense, a veil uh, that you have to look behind to see the mystery that, oh, uh, day and night, uh, well, in New Jerusalem, there is no night, which means there is that separation between day and night is now no longer there. Um, I'm, I'm having trouble finding words to say it, <laughs> just like you were. Yeah. But, but some of that yeah. is that sense of going through all these, going backwards through the process, <laughs> back to full oneness. Um, that's the best I can do at the moment. Yeah. Each of us has a forerunning <laughs> journey that's actually specifically designed for us to get us from here to there. And each of us uh, has a, a slightly, well, a different details of journey, but we all get to the same place. We get there uh, by our own path, let's put it that way. And, and um, variations on a theme almost, if you want to put it that way. Okay, then next step after uh, fathering is being laid as a foundation, one of 12 on a bench of 12. I want to, uh, I spoke a little bit about uh, everlasting. I want to go back to K2. 
kingship. There's, there's, uh, we are kings and we are sons. Kingship and sonship. With kingship, what we're doing is overcoming all enemies. Uh, overcoming uh, the Antichrist rebellion, so overcoming other, other um, kings that are rebellion against God. We do that as, as corporately. Overcoming sin, overcoming death, especially those two things. Becoming an overcoming king. And once we finish the process of overcoming, at that point we are functioning fully in the government of God, and we have um, reversed the effects of rebellion. So let me back up a little bit. First rebellion is Lucifer and his angels rebelling against uh, God. They decide that, or Lucifer starts this, deciding he doesn't like where he's been placed by destiny. He wants a different place. He makes a trade, a negative trade, into rebellion, and that, that rebellion is sin, negative trade, sin, same thing. Rebellion, sin, disobedience, um, unrighteousness, those are all words for, for sin. Uh, the next rebellion is Adam and Eve, believing the lie that, that uh, the serpent has, taught, has told them, they believe the lie, they make a negative trade, and um, at that point, sin enters the world, and after sin enters the world, death enters the world. I'm going to redefine those two words. So sin is negative trading. Death is separation from oneness with God. Death is separation. So uh, physical death is separation from your loved ones. Spiritual death is separation from God. So negative trading entered the world when Adam and Eve did this, and separation from oneness with God entered the world. As kings, we overcome all enemies, and the last enemy is separation from oneness with God. It's death. So we make positive trades reversing the negative trades that were made by Adam and Eve. We come back into obedience, and we come back into oneness with God. At this point, overcoming king, we are overcoming kings, we are mighty gods, and we move on to everlasting father, move up to everlasting father, so we're moving up into the higher levels of sonship now as son of God. And then finally, the fifth and last of five names given to us as sons of God is Prince of Peace. I see Prince of Peace as great high priest. The end of our entire journey of, of um, undoing all the negative trades and getting back to where we were and then growing up to getting back to where Adam and Eve were as sons of God when they stepped out of being sons of God, get back to there and then grow up in maturity to what they were meant to grow up into maturity. The end of the whole process is great high priest. High priesthood is the end of the whole process. That's the goal that we've been shooting for all along. And it was as high priest that Jesus functioned as forerunner. So that gets us to the place of what he foreran for us. Great high priest over the house of God. I see great high priest over the house of God also as being that capstone at the top of the pyramid. It's, it's the full oneness with Jesus and his full as son of God, as overcoming king and son of God. Is the capstone also the cornerstone? I've been asking that and I haven't done the, the discovery to 
to look to see whether there is a cornerstone and a capstone or whether actually what we've been looking at all along and was translated as cornerstone is actually the capstone because that um, if you look at the Egyptian pyramids, that that mini pyramid placed on the very top is 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 the end of the building project. Yeah. And it's also a a full pyramid, just a smaller one. So yeah. the scripture says that we grow up into Christ. And what we're growing up into as as individually as houses of God and corporately as houses of God is we are growing up into that capstone, into being the full, I mean, he is the full pattern. And when we are done grow, being restored and then growing up, we come to the place of being just like him as far as being kings and sons of God. And it is interesting that, that uh, there's a scripture that says high priest over the house of God, like at the top. <laughs> when I was just recently, last hey. weeks, I was seeing myself uh, growing up into capstone and I felt like I was, I'm still doing this. I'm pulling others up into the capstone. Pulling others up into the capstone. My sense is that there's a there's a a laying of twelve foundation stones, and then there's this pulling up into the capstone. And capstone is fully one with Jesus as overcoming King and Son of God. Uh, this is the place at which the universal ecclesia, universal ecclesia, uh, comes into full oneness. It's it's like uh, we've had this. This, this whole thing about how, and this is something I'm, I'm moving into now, just beginning to move into is, um, I mean, actually doing something about it, is how to, how to bring the ecclesia into full oneness. And it's like my sense is that that full oneness only occurs at the capstone level. Uh, before that, we just don't have all of the... Uh, well, let's let's put it this way. Here's here's another verse that came to me recently that I've been working on. Uh, Ephesians chapter four it talks about the um, fivefold, and my concern here not is not the fivefold, but it says that they're in effect until we all come to the unity of the faith and the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. Knowledge is oneness, like husband and wife oneness. Knowledge. Uh, so the unity of the faith, I've noticed this when the word the is in front of something like the Christ, the Son of God, the suffering servant, the Lord. <laughs> um, the unity of the faith and the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. Our full oneness as, a, as the ecclesia comes with the unity of the knowledge of the Son of God. It comes with full oneness with the Son of God. It's like there's degrees of oneness. You, you see the oneness, you receive the oneness, you enter into the oneness, and then you've got a way to go before you finally are fully one. And then once you're fully one, now you possess the oneness. And after that, you manifest the oneness. Manifest oneness is the place at which um, we're going to be able to talk to our brothers and sisters in other houses or in other arcs. And the um, I'm going to say this out here and just get it out there. Uh, the, the, um, there's four rebellions. Okay, so Lucifer rebelled, Lucifer rebelled. Then Adam and Eve rebelled. We talked about that. Sin and death entered. Then the watcher angels rebelled. They were meant to uh, train us up into Son of God. And a good number of them uh, 
left their first estate, left their position, less, left their destined function of, of facilitating us up into becoming sons of God. Um, very interesting that son of God's right there. That, I mean, that, that rebellion right there is right at, is, 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 is uh, directed directly at us not becoming sons of God the way we're destined to become. And then the fourth rebellion happens at Babel. And they are together in oneness in their rebellion. And the Godhead says, let us go down. And the Godhead says, there is not, because of their oneness, their oneness of being rebellion against God, because of their oneness, nothing is impossible for them, it says. Oneness brings us to a place of nothing being impossible for us. They were in negative oneness. There was nothing impossible for them in their rebellion against God. And God came down and stopped their building project of the Tower of Babel, um, which was meant to get themselves a great name and to, to build a tower um, in rebellion against God. There was going to be power involved with that tower. And God says that this cannot be allowed to happen. And he, the Godhead, confuses their one language into multiple languages and then there's multiple now there's nations instead of one nation there's many nations and what i'm getting at is that judgment the godhead placed at the tower of babel is what's resulting it, the result of it was it drew a line in the sand so that the rebellion could not go past that point it couldn't get any worse he broke it up <laughs> so that they couldn't go to the next steps of being in rebellion, which would be to bring the entire world under rebellion. I mean, exact opposite of what the Godhead had planned in destiny. And that line in the sand that, that Godhead drew there by, by, by judgment is exactly what is keeping us as different streams and heavenly realms from being able to talk to each other. We each have different heavenly realm languages. Um, some of them we can we can are are uh, closer languages to ours and we can understand what they're talking about, but some of them we can't. And especially um, uh, leadership in the different houses and and uh, arcs does not get together and does not listen to what the forerunning that's being done in other houses. It's like each house and each arc is is just got their eyes set on their own forerunning, and they're not looking around to see what everybody else is forerunning. Um, the full forerunning of the Ecclesia is a combination of all this forerunning done by all these different fathers. Uh, everything we need is out there in all the fathers. But we have to listen to one another and receive from one another, like we just did receiving from Lorna today and receiving from man as, man as fathers. That, that is how we come into the full the fullness um, is by listening to all the other fathers inside our group and outside our group. Uh, and my point is that that judgment that confused the languages and made the 70 nations uh, is exactly what is holding us apart as the Ecclesia. But it's there to keep us from joining together in rebellion it's there to keep the oneness from being negative oneness. It's, so as soon as we get past the place of, of um, rebellion and we remove sin and death from our midst governmentally as overcoming kings, we can then move on to removing the confusion of the languages and then there will be one language once again, but it'll be a language of positive oneness. And I see this as the end goal of, of this whole um, forerunning and governmental actions and priestly actions that we've been doing is all leading to the place where we come eventually back into full oneness as the ecclesia. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, functional oneness where we are able to talk with one another and understand each other and all this forerunning that's being done all around in the ecclesia by all these fathers of which each of you is a part all of this will be added together into the one big picture and we'll get the whole thing uh, 
that's my uh, vision as of a few days ago. That's what I see. It, uh, that's what I'm forerunning at this point, is what I just articulated. Uh, and I'm looking for the governmental action to remove that judgment of confusing the languages, but I know it cannot be removed until we first remove rebellion from our midst and the death from our midst. Rebellion is wrong, I'm sorry, rebellion, sin is wrong trading, and death is separation from the oneness, separation from oneness with the Godhead. What did you see and sense as you, I, I thank you for your willingness to listen. I, I needed to articulate this. I needed to speak it so that it was out there and the frequency was out there. What did you see and sense as I was talking? What, what do you have to add? Well, uh, just at the end there, when you were saying that we had to come together as one voice, I saw um, like um, a mouth um, with a, like a sound of a trumpet, but it was there was nothing there. But you can see it was a very loud frequency, and it was really it was all blue. Um, it was a blue frequency vibration, but it was very strong and powerful coming from his mouth. And I could see his mouth on the corner, it wasn't full on, it was just the corner of his face. And I can see, a, yeah, like a strong frequency, it was like a very powerful um, vibration, colour vibrations, frequency. Uh, yeah, it looked like a sound of a trumpet, but I didn't hear it, but I could see it. <clears throat> That's what I see. Thanks for sharing it. That's another shofar. That's a shofar. Yeah, well, he was blue as well. So, you know, that's the color of might, and he's um, very powerful. Mm. Mm. Yeah, because I'm, I'm seeing the difference between oneness with the Godhead. So we have oneness with the Godhead, but then there's another level of oneness, and that's oneness with one another. Uh, it starts with oneness with the Godhead, and we become one with the Godhead. But then it moves into oneness with one another uh, within um, ecclesias, like we're functioning as an ecclesia here, as a group. Um, OUB is an ecclesia. Uh, there's many, many ecclesias. Uh, but then it, that, uh, that oneness spreads to the whole universal ecclesia also. Uh, functional oneness of actually being able to work together with one another. Uh, and thank you. Yeah, that's going forth. Um, what, the other thing I've been doing here as I've been speaking is I'm, I'm, I'm speaking out the full revelation of what overcoming kingship is to you so that you can receive it. And I'm also speaking out the full revelation of what Son of God is, what Sonship is, so that you can see it and receive it. This, this is the overall flow of kingship. Overcoming kingship is overcoming all enemies, especially sin and death. And Son of God, Sonship, begins with wonderful so your name is wonderful then your name is counselor that's the same name that the holy spirit was sent as counselor jesus was here on earth as counselor so that's a big name and then mighty god is a really big name that's the name we overcome in the function of the government of god and then everlasting father first receiving everlasting father and then becoming everlasting father and flowing out in frequencies to others. Um, and then finally, Prince of Peace, which is great high priest over the house of God, which is capstone. Um, and I see the primary function of the great high priest is to bring the ecclesia back into oneness, functional oneness, back to speaking one language and able to work together. 
in small groups first, especially benches of 12, which we've been calling houses. And remember, there's only one house of God. There's multiple houses, but there's one house, just like there's 12, but there's one, and there's seven, but there's one, and there's three, but there's one, and there's four, but you understand uh, the whole purpose is one. Uh, it works at the 12 level, but it also works at the one level. Um, great high priest is meant to bring the ecclesia back into full functional oneness, speaking the same heavenly realms language that we can understand each other in all parts of the ecclesia, and we can work together in all parts of the ecclesia. And you can't work with all of them all at the same time, but but getting to that place we're able to work together and uh, one house does not look down upon another house or just say I don't get you or I don't think you're completely right or what all those negative things that's that's what I'm seeing but back to you um, and that that's just putting the road out the way out in front of you for you to receive where you are right now, forerunners moving into fathering, and at some place being laid as a foundation as part of a bench of 12. Well, the overall goal up ahead of us is the entire universal ecclesia coming back to a place of speaking one language and working together with no separation of any kind, because separation is death. So all the, all the walls of separation being torn down. <laughs> and Lorna, that may, come, may possibly come back to your, your lightning. Your, your, I wouldn't be surprised if those are weapons to tear down the walls, to destroy the walls. Not the people, but the walls between them. And actually the walls, of course, are, are inside us. <laughs> The oneness is first taking down all the walls inside us between us and God. I spoke as I was talking with ma'am about the different veils of separation that we pass through back into full oneness with the Godhead. Uh, but then there's that whole process of going on to taking down all the walls between us and all the others in the ecclesia that we are actually one with because we're one with the Godhead. Each of us has that oneness with the Godhead. We have that place of common ground of one of the knowledge of the Son of God, of oneness with the Son of God. Son of God is oneness. Um, a great high priest brings back into oneness. Uh, but there's that practical tearing down of all the barriers in between us. We're all one with the Father, one with the Son, one with the Spirit, and one with the entire Godhead as one, because they're one. Anyway, you understand where, what I'm saying. The journey begins with forerunning and then fathering. Every wall you take down brings you further along that journey. Another way yeah. to look at it. Go ahead, go ahead, Aggie. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. You know, when you talk about um, fathering and forerunning, I don't know, for some reason, you know, you said something about uh, the beginning, uh, counting the days of creation backwards and you were saying something, and that really just... Uh, sparked of something. So it, as you're talking about foreign and fathering and foreign, I'm seeing <clears throat> how it connects with um, Enoch and then the fathers of the first generations, um, Adam, um, Enoch, Noah, Abraham. And for some reason, just feel that these fathers have some kind of um, some kind of revelation that was preserved in them that they can really trade into us as far as um, 
this kind of oneness is concerned because when you were talking about other houses um not understanding each other's language um i see that as a thing of the soul um the soul not reaching that level of ascendance yet in the ecclesia because the kind of oneness that we're able to experience now is the oneness of the spirit uh, which is the new creation man with which you relate with father and one another at a spiritual level you know but i think that separation that you're talking about is something that uh, the soul still carries some some small residue of by that confusion of language and i'm seeing that the fathers uh, that live before the confusion of the language of the year uh, for some reason i just I just feel I have a knowing in me that they carried some form of revelation of oneness that no longer didn't exist uh, at the soul level of man after uh, after that confusion of language has, had come upon uh, the earth and you know, the Tower of Babel. For some reason, I don't know how that resonates, but I thought I'd just <laughs> sow that out there and see how that goes. Yeah, I, I hear you talking and I hear you seeking and searching and doing discovery as you talk and you will uh you'll find it eggy keep looking you'll find the answer to that uh, one of the one of the baptisms is the baptism into the fathers and you mentioned fathers uh, uh baptism into the fathers is, is oneness with the fathers and uh, yeah the the answers are there and, and very likely in those particular fathers that you mentioned. There, there's key moments in, in, uh, in history that they, they carry something that is, is meant to be uh, traded into us. Yes, yes. And it, it is our soul. Yeah, keep, 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 uh, keep, keep doing discovery, keep seeking, you will find. Yeah. And then share it. Yes, the issue is in the soul. <laughs> um, we are meant to come to a place, we are destined to come to a place of one soul, uh, one, one spirit, one soul, one body. Uh, one soul is a fully restored soul. With all the barriers, all those barriers are in our soul. Yes, that's where they are. Yeah, so um, as kings, we overcome the things that keep our body, bring the, restores our body back to full immortality. Um, restoring the soul. Well, first off, it's going to be oneness with Jesus and his one soul. Souls made up of mind will and emotions we have the mind of christ we also have the will of christ we also have the emotions of christ my suspicion is that a lot of it's in the emotions emotions are like positive frequencies or negative frequencies And what we choose to do, we'd like to think it's a reasoned out thing, but the bottom line every time is we feel like doing it or we don't feel like doing it. Um, the real, real key to everything is emotions. When your emotions are lined up and they're, and they're um, in agreement with destiny and so on, then this flow happens and, and the, this frequency flows out to others. When your emotions are are not lined up that work, we're like a closed, I mean, we're like a fortress. <laughs> we're a stronghold. I, I have a suspicion that emotions is where the key to the whole thing is. Nothing gets done if we don't choose to do it. That's our will. 
but we don't choose to do anything if we don't feel like doing it. Restoration of soul, that happens in Zion. The uh, Zion's in between the everlasting and New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem's the body with the 12. The soul is the sevens and everlasting is the threes. Turning the recording off. <laughs>